Tallulah Gorge, a two mile long gash in the Earth's crust in the mountains of North Georgia, a thousand feet deep in some places, amazing beauty in every direction. Plate collisions during the forming of the Appalachian mountain chain and later the constant flowing water of the Tallulah River helped carve and sculpt this amazing ravine over millions and millions of years. More recently, in the late 1800s, Tallulah Gorge had become a very popular vacation spot. And the beautiful gorge, with its five roaring waterfalls, was labeled a scenic wonder. In the early 1900s, Atlanta's growing need for electrical power changed the landscape of North Georgia and Tallulah Gorge. A dam was built at the front end of the gorge, causing the tourism in the area to diminish quite a bit which may not have been such a bad thing either. Tulula Gorge has been the backdrop for several books, songs, and movies over the years. Several key action scenes from the 1970s thriller Deliverance were shot here, as well as the opening scenics for the movie Grizzly. I had been here a few times as a kid and started hiking here some in the 1980s. I was also getting into photography at the time. Here are a few pics I snapped around 1985. A crashed car down in the gorge was not what I was expecting to see. Looking closely at the rear window, the chrome edging on the seat, and the tail lights, this looks like a 1965 Ford Thunderbird, which is a pretty sought after car these days. I was a teenager back then and just filed the picture away and forgot about it. Recently though, I had read two news stories of missing persons being found in their cars 40 years after their disappearance in South Dakota and in Oklahoma. These stories reminded me of the car I had taken a picture of deep into the gorge. Up to the mid 1990s, there was a tiny dirt road right from Highway 23 to the Southwest Cliff where Walinda's old tightrope tower still sits. These days, that road is gated off. I wondered if this car could have driven off the cliff without anyone noticing and basically sat there for years. So I decided to go back and try and find that car nearly 30 years later. I was a teenager back then, it's been a long time, and I wasn't sure where I took the picture. I do know I had a Canon AE-1 with a 200 millimeter zoom lens at the time. So the car was likely a pretty good distance from anywhere I could have stood on the cliff edge. I was pretty sure it was off the cliff by the old Walinda Tower though. I went back to check the area from the top of the cliff, but didn't see anything at all that looked like the car. It's summer now and the trees are full of leaves and the trees have grown a lot in the past 30 years. So I decided to search from the bottom of the gorge up. The hike down into Tallulah Gorge is nothing short of amazing and the depth and sheer size will make you feel small really fast. From the bottom looking up, the thought of finding a car I saw 30 years ago seems near impossible. All I see is sheer cliffs and trees. What I need to do is try and find the clearing where the old dirt road used to be. So I keep heading downstream and looking at the horizon.
I do a lot of hiking and exploring, and I'd have to put this hike way up there on the list of physically demanding and challenging. Lots of fun boulders and elevation changes, and the amazing sound of the powerful river beside you at all times. I eventually make my way down to Oceana Falls, another truly stunning sight. Oceana Falls is visible from the cliffs up top, so I know I'm getting into the right area. I start looking more closely into the trees for any views of chrome or odd looking objects that don't fit the landscape. I truly don't know how high up the cliffs I need to be looking though. I'm just going off a picture I snapped 30 years ago. A little frustrating, but also a very exciting challenge. Down below Oceana Falls, I do see a speck of a bright shine up in the trees. Could this be the chrome bumper of the 1965 T-Bird? I feel like I'm in the right area so I've got to check it out. Across the river and head straight up the steep mountain. Sure enough, as soon as I get up into the thick of the forest, I find something that looks like an old sea sponge or a mushroom. It turns out to be a piece of scorched or burned cushion foam, like maybe from the seat of a car. That's interesting at the very least. I might be on the right track. Beyond this, I also find an old mutilated piece of metal that looks a lot like a carburetor cover, or what's left of one. 
like an air filter cover. Getting up into the canopy here is like stepping into a different world, a southern U.S. rainforest. Amazing cliffs and rock formations concealed by a thick umbrella of greenery. I have no idea which direction to go, other than up. I just look and climb. and the looking and climbing pays off. An absolutely bizarre thing to see. Not the old T-bird, but still shocking to find. My first thought was, damn, how did this old truck get here in the middle of this thick forest? But I already knew the answer. It was launched off the cliff high above me sometime in the 1960s, 70s, or 80s. I don't know if it was driven off accidentally or launched off for fun. The engine is still intact. Everything seems intact, not like a junker that was dumped. But if it was driven off the cliff by accident, I would think I would be seeing an old pair of boots, overalls, and a flannel shirt laying in the floorboard with a pile of bones in them, and an old skull with a cat diesel hat still on it. But whoever was driving could have been thrown out way before this truck landed here. This thing is absolutely mangled. Interesting, there is a company logo on the doors of this old truck of a business that operates in White County, Georgia. I thought about calling them, but then I thought, what if I'm kicking an old bee's nest? What if this truck was launched off the cliff 40 years ago and reported as stolen? What if it was stolen and dumped? A lot of what ifs. I'm just here to try and find the 65 T-Bird I snapped a picture of years ago. This truck is a new mystery. The rear tire is relatively bald. I'm not sure if that means anything though. Plenty of my friends drive around on bald tires and lay a lot of rubber on the Georgia asphalt. There's no key in the ignition, but the impact has flung bolted parts off. The key could have flown out on the first impact. There's no glass left anywhere, and the hood is missing. Remember, I found a carburetor cover way down the mountain. The engine looks like an inline six. This thing is truly a squashed beer can. The bed is totally buckled. Up on the hill I find the battery, what's left of it. And an old steel drum.
and an antique toilet potty, probably not related to the truck, <laughs> which is scary as shit. Ah, and up on the mountain, a blue truck hood, mangled, a hell of a ride. I continue on up the mountain in search of the old T-Bird. And I come across something else. Any idea what it is? I think I know, but that would be weird for sure. The climb is getting steeper with every step, and another huge sheer rock cliff is up ahead. Well. white fiberglass bucket I just passed is exactly what I thought it was. But it's still shocking to see this big hunk of mangled utility truck down in here too. This old thing is teetering dangerously on the edge of two huge boulders. What an odd, amazing sight. Here's the old turret where the hydraulic arm used to sit. It must have been some major racket when that huge steel monster flew off. This truck looks old, maybe late 60s. Here's the battery. This thing is literally hanging in the air here. As I stand here in awe of this chunk of metal, I feel something crawling at my leg. No harm. Here's the old engine still intact. This thing is sitting so dangerously I can barely get a glimpse into the old cab. What I can see immediately though is it looks like the steering wheel was wired so it wouldn't turn. So maybe this thing was launched off the cliff with a rock on the gas pedal. But if we look to the very left on the seat, there are a few white things that look like arm or rib bones. There truly is no safe way to climb up in there and get a closer look though. Up on the mountain at the edge of the cliff, I find some more pieces. And the giant hydraulic arm. Danger for sure.
This huge thing stretches out like old steel dinosaur bones in a rainforest. So I go on this journey searching for an old T-bird and I find two mangled old trucks instead. They were either driven off the cliff by accident or launched off for fun or to collect on insurance. My big question now though is where is the old T-bird I saw as a teenager? It's got to be at the top of this cliff. As I hike my way back out of here I come across a few more interesting finds. An old frisbee. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to throw a frisbee off a cliff? I'm surprised there aren't a hundred down here. <laughs> One of Burt Reynolds or Ned Beatty's old beer cans from the Deliverance Wrap Party. What an amazing day. I didn't find the car I'm looking for, but I'm pretty sure I know where it is now. So I went back to the top of the cliff and I tried to reason where I would have realistically been as a teenager with a camera. And I looked and I looked and looked. And there it was, the old T-Bird, still sitting where it was 30 years ago, stuck high on the cliff straight above where I found the two old trucks. The trees and evergreen brush have grown up to almost completely conceal it now, but it still sits there, like a time capsule. Who knows what's inside it? In the glove compartment? In the trunk? Under the seats? Are there human remains in there? What's the story? How did it get there? The word Tallulah means leaping water in Choctaw. Leave it to the white man to see it as a place to leap cars off. What a piece of nostalgia for me and a feeling of accomplishment that I'm standing in the same location I stood 30 years ago. It's nice to see some things remain the same. A mystery is still a mystery. <laughs>